Half of you here, because uh, you've seen my videos on YouTube, uh, the other half just saw Dick in the title and you're like, I'm there. Uh. <laughs> Welcome, you are my people. Uh, I love it. Thank you for coming out on a Tuesday night to hear me talk about Dick. Woo woo, Vienna. Uh, I don't know, man. I think everyone loves Dick. Everyone loves it. Loves it. No matter how you identify, everyone loves Dick. Everyone. Like straight women, we love the Dick. Yeah, yeah. Love it, yeah. Gay men, they love the dick, you know? Like, obviously, like, num num num, can't get enough. Yeah. But you know who loves dick the most, like, out of everyone? Out of everyone? Straight men. Yeah. You already know. Yeah, all right. Yeah, look at that smile. He's like, yeah, yeah I love it, right? Because what is the one thing, what is the first thing that a straight man will graffiti? A big old cock and balls, right? Because, like, these guys, these straight men, they're not out here on the streets of Vienna with their spray can putting vaginas around the city. They're not out here putting big vulva mural arts everywhere, you know? They're not just out there like... Um... Like, they need to know where the clit is, is what I'm saying, Vienna. But also, how scary to see a bunch of vulvas around the city? It's like, oh, is that a vortex to another dimension? Oh, it's moist inside. Uh, I will say lesbians also love the dick, but they're just a little bit more like the vegans eat the fake meat situation. Love it. Love it. I'm so happy. Thank you guys so much for coming out here. I fucking love this city so fucking much. I love it. So thank you guys for coming out here uh, for my special filming tonight. I'm very excited. Uh, and I wrote this show uh, last year when I was living with my boyfriend. <laughs> That's right. I said boyfriend. <laughs> and I wrote this show and I thought I would come out and be like, <laughs> fuck you all, I'm in love. <laughs> uh, I'm single. Um... Yeah, single. Single people. I don't know. <laughs> Look, I don't know, Matt. Single people, I don't know if we're okay, all right? Individually, I think we're okay, but collectively, we're not okay. <laughs> My best friend went on a date recently with this guy, and he invited her around to Netflix and chill, right? I know, I know, because people still do that, and she was desperate. Don't judge her, okay? <laughs> but she went around there, and you know what he decided to put on Netflix to get her in the mood? the Jeffrey Epstein documentary. <laughs> like, is he just seeing sexual references? Mm, this is gonna warm her up? No. I don't know, man. I'm, uh, and so I was waxing, so me and my ex, we, we, we did break up at the end of 2021, but then we ended up having like one of those long drawn out breakups, because the dick was good and uh, <laughs> she gets it. <laughs> She's like, um, where do you think I'm going tonight, bitch? Uh, straight after this show, it's okay. You get, you get my approval, it's fine. Uh, but I don't know, so then like last year, I was like on my rebound stage in like the summer and I love the rebound stage. You know, the rebound stage where your vagina turns into a cookie monster. She's like, no, 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 right? And I was on this rebound stage and I live in Berlin right now. Berlin is like one of the worst places to date in the entire world. Uh, I think it's just where dating goes to die, uh, basically. And that's not because of the Germans alone. Uh, but I like, so I'm like dating there and every time, like it's not just Berlin, every time now I get on a dating app or something, there's always some like acronym or like sexual orientation that I have to Google before the date, right? So I went on a date with this guy the whole time. He's sitting there and he's like, ugh, I hate white people. I hate white people. White people are the worst. I was like, <laughs> you're white, okay? And then he continued to tell me that he was an antinatalist, and I was like, the, the fuck is an antinatalist? So I went to the bathroom and Googled it, right? <laughs> Turns out, antinatalist is someone who is ethically and morally against childbirth. <laughs> All right, calm down, okay? I was like, oh my God, how much does this guy hate himself? He's white and alive. <laughs> yeah, and then he didn't want to use condoms. I'm like, that's not how that works, right? He's like, oopsie, I came inside. I'm like, oopsie, you're not an antinatalist anymore. 
And he explained it to me. He's like, yeah, like antinatalism, it's just like, you know, like this movement where it's just like, we just didn't like give consent to be born. I was like, dude, that's everyone, okay? <laughs> Have you tried living in 2023? Ew, okay? Uh, but it was tough, man. And like, so I love living in Europe. Like some of you who may, may know, you know I'm from Australia and I moved to Europe about seven years ago and I fucking love living in Europe. I love living in Europe. I love it so much because you can sleep with people <laughs> from so many different countries. It's amazing. Yes. And then base judgment on that country based purely on the sexual experience, you know? <laughs> Like, for example, you sleep with a French person and it's amazing. You're like, ah, viva la France, oui. <laughs> but if it's shit, you're like, ah, that's why they surrendered. History uh, makes sense. I'm glad you laughed at that because they did not laugh in Paris. Uh, just death stares for the rest of the show. Uh, but I do, I love it. Because like in Australia, you literally have to take a three hour flight to get anywhere else, to get to another country, right? So when I moved, I lost my mind, right? And now I feel like I need one of those maps where you're just like, you know, crossing off the countries, you know, like, or scratching them out, you know? It's like crazy. Like I'm worried that the last country I have left will be like the Vatican City, you know? <laughs> And to be honest, they don't want me anyway. Uh, too old. Uh, and wrong gender. Uh, I love it, man. I love it. So I like. I, I love it. I've, I've dated Germans. <laughs> Never again. Uh, uh, dated Austrian. I dated one Austrian guy, but the whole time, the whole three-hour date, he just complained about Germans. I was like. <laughs> can't do this. Uh, so I've dated like Italian, I've dated French, and uh, but I've never dated a Spanish guy, right? I never dated a Spanish guy. So I matched with this guy on Bumble, because I'm a feminist, and uh, <laughs> and I was super excited because I've never dated a Spanish guy before, but I was like, you know what, fuck it. I've been listening to Bad Bunny, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> So we go right, we go on, I go on this date and I get there and he's sitting there and he's a, like, he's a total fuckboy. Initially I just see him and I was like, total fuckboy. Now we know what a fuckboy is, yes? Yes. Yeah, see, all the straight women and gay men are like... <laughs> <laughs> there's, a few, there's a few straight men looking at me right now. Like, what, what, what is a fuckboy? <laughs> you, you are a fuckboy. <laughs> you. Yo. It's like, fuck boy, fuck boy, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come in you? Uh -huh. Run away. <laughs> but we don't, because we got daddy issues. And, um, it's great, right? But I, and like, I, was, like, I don't know if anyone, any, I'm a millennial, I don't know if anyone here has ever tried to explain to their boomer parents what it's like to date now, right? It seems like it just like does not compute. Like my mom, she doesn't get the lingo. She's like, Eleanor, you know, you just gotta stop with the boy fucks. I'm like, mom, it's fuck boys. <laughs> She's like, I know, you just gotta stop boy fucking. I'm like, please stop saying it like that. <laughs> Because she's 100% going into work on Monday being like, ugh, Eleanor is boy fucking again. Uh, I'm gonna get arrested, right? It's <laughs> a real reason why I'm not allowed back in Australia. Um, but I'm there with this, this, this fuck boy and I'm like, you know what, fuck it. Like, you know, it's been on my rebound stage and all I want is a good fuck, right? And you hope it's gonna be good because it's in the title, right? <laughs> So we sit there, we're sitting there, and, uh, and he's looking at me with these, like, and he had this little, like, Pablo Escobar little mustache on, like, like, yeah, right? And then he looks at me and he's like, eh, senorita, eh, senorita, eh, do you want to go back to your place? I was like, with that accent, absolutely, right? So we go back to my place. Uh, and just that day, right, just that day, I bought a brand new Ikea mirror, right, perfect for taking selfies, right, and he walks into my apartment, he sees the mirror and goes, <laughs> ah. ah, si, si, me gusta, si, si. I was like, do you want the name of it? It's from Ikea. Right? He's like, no, 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 eh, senorita, 
Eh, señorita, eh, do you want to see my naked body? <laughs> like, well, well, yeah, that's why we're here, okay? <laughs> And then he continued to get so naked, like so quickly, like that scene from Bruce Almighty, you know, just like, <laughs> I just. <laughs> so quickly. But guess what, guys? I didn't look, I didn't look below the belt. I know I didn't, because I was too busy looking at his belly button. Yeah. Because he had this like weird, like outy belly button. Like, I love this part because there's always single women. They're like, oh my God, ew. He had an Audi belly button. Like that is so gross. Like what kind of father would he make? Uh, ladies, this is why we're single, okay? Lower those expectations. Uh, I don't know, but like, but this was like, like it was like, like real, like, like, a, like it was out, right? And I said to him like, what? What is that? Right? Vasi starts, right? And, and he's like, uh, maybe the, the Nanya. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, the Nanya. I was like, is that the singer? Like, what is that? He's like, no, 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 no. It's the, 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 the medical uh, condition, uh, you know, the, 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 the Enya. And I was like, oh, a hernia, right? <laughs> the medical condition that your dad has, right? And then he looks me dead in the eyes. He goes, eh, senorita, eh, do you want to push it in? Spanish foreplay. <laughs> then I was like, oh my God, is this the button that activates the dick? Like, <laughs> I did it. <laughs> People are like, did it work? And I was like, mm, Sissy. Uh, yeah, how's your dating life on a scale of zero to pushing in a hernia out of Vienna? <laughs> I, uh, I want a baby. Yep, no, that's a really weird segue from the hernia pushing. Uh, I get it, but there's no other way. I, I don't know, like, uh, it's a weird thing to say to a random group of strangers, I get that, you know, but I'm just trying to manifest it, you know, because <laughs> manifest, good, manifesto, bad. Uh, and it's weird being a 34-year-old single woman on stage saying that I want a baby, you know, because it's kind of ironic. Like, I feel like a child asking for a child, you know? <laughs> He's like, but daddy, I want one. Because <laughs> in my early 20s, right? In my early 20s, I didn't want kids. I didn't want those little shits. I don't want to bring them into this world with the rising population, climate change, doom and gloom, all going to be eating cockroach protein bars and living in a fiery devil hell. <laughs> One week a month, I'm like, semen, 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 semen. Where is it? Yeah. I turn into that old witch from the Disney films, like, come inside, yeah. <laughs> Just want someone to come inside, Vienna. <laughs> That's not an antinatalist, you know? crazy and people always give you advice when you're single in your 30s like and you want a child like they always give you advice They're like oh Eleanor why don't you just go and you know raise your eggs yeah you know it's the 2023 you can have it all you can have the family you can have the career why don't you just go and freeze your eggs I'm like okay let me spend a house deposit putting eggs in a freezer okay <laughs> also what makes you think I can raise a man but not date one <laughs> And when I went home over Christmas last year, I had three of my best gay friends offer me their sperm. And I was like, oh, that's not what I asked Santa for for Christmas. <laughs> Just a vial of semen. Like, no, right? But then you start looking at your friends very differently when they offer you sperm. Because you're like, oh, what kind of baby would we make? You know? <laughs> start putting them through the AI generators. You're like, oh, what kind of baby, right? Like, my friend, like, he said to me, he's like, do you want my sperm? I'm like, mm -mm, no, you've got depression. <laughs> Another friend was like, do you want my sperm? I'm like, mm -mm, you like Joe Rogan. Uh, mm -mm, definitely not. My other friend was like, do you want mine? I'm like, <laughs> definitely not, you're a ginger. Uh, <laughs> people always get really angry when I say that, like here in Europe, they always say, they're like, oh no, Elena, how can you say that? That's mean, right? I was like, yeah, but what you gotta know is that that child would be raised in Australia and it would burn to a crisp, okay? <laughs> so I'm just looking out for the child, you know? 
it's eugenics 101. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. It's a tough time. And there's also a time, like, as a woman, like, where I don't know if anyone as well, like, has got a lot of married friends. I have all my, like, friends are married. They've all got kids. And my, my sister-in-law, she wants me to have kids, but not for me, for her, right? <laughs> She's like, oh, my God, Eleanor, you know what we could do together? You know what we could do? You know what we could do? <laughs> we could have <laughs> mummy dates together. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? You know, we can take our prams out into the park. We can go and sit in a cafe and have our decaf almond milk cappuccinos. Yeah. And then you know what we could do together, Eleanor? You know what we could do? <laughs> we could breastfeed together. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the most amazing feeling? Honestly, Eleanor, it's the most amazing feeling. Wouldn't it be the most amazing feeling? Uh... I was like, um, so I don't need to use breastfeeding as an excuse to get my tits out in public, okay? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Just tequila. <laughs> I don't know, man. But there is, there's a time, there's a time as a woman where you do not want to be pregnant. Like in your early 20s, if you have your first pregnancy scare. And uh, me and my ex, we traveled the world together. Um, he didn't want to use condoms and I don't want to be on the pill because uh, the pill makes me fat and crazy, which are two things that I don't want to be because I'm already one of those things. <laughs> and if you think I'm fat, fuck you, okay? Yeah. Fuck you guys, right? But I didn't, right? So we Russian related that shit every fucking day. But what that meant is that I had to do a lot of pregnancy tests in a lot of different countries, right? Now, you take your baseline anxiety of doing a pregnancy test. I don't know why I look directly at you, sir. Uh, <laughs> and then do it in a language that you do not understand, right? Oh, that shit. That should be Netflix's new reality TV show, right? <laughs> It's stressful, like the first one I ever did was here, it was in Germany, right? And I was there and I got it, it was all in German and I was there and I was like, I was like, I was like, schwanger, me schwanger. I was like, stop yelling at me. <laughs> I did one in Italy and I just felt like my old Italian nonna was gonna come out and be like, you are a sinful whore. <laughs> she says that anyway. Uh... But the last one I did was in India and that shit was D-I-Y, right? <laughs> Because I walked into the... Oh, some of you have done it. Welcome. Uh, I walked into the pharmacy and I asked the guy for a pregnancy test and he just hands me like a cup, a tray, a dripper, a Bunsen burner. <laughs> like, are we cooking meth or cooking a baby? What are we doing here, right? I don't know. And there's a time, like, as women, like, yeah, like, you do not want to be pregnant. And I think the real reason why I want to be pregnant is I don't have to have a period for 12 months. Like, no period. No period, 12 months. And I know there's other ways, right? But I told you I don't want to be on birth control, right? Like, like no period, 12 months. Oh, ama like, amazing, right? And I think that's the reason why men have so much confidence, you know? Because they've never had a period. They've never had one, right? They've never been in some, like, random Starbucks, had to ask a stranger to be like, psst, hey, excuse me. Yeah, um, can you, can you check the back of my skirt, please? <laughs> It's okay, okay, Duncan. Right? They've never had to change tampons during heavy flow and heavy turbulence on a Ryanair flight. <laughs> and they've never had to, they've never, they've never coughed and dislodged said tampon and then had to walk like a newborn giraffe to the nearest fucking bathroom. I love this part because all the women are laughing and all the guys are like, fuck, that can happen. <laughs> what is this? What is this powerful pussy? What is going to happen? <laughs> Am I going to go home? What's going to happen? Uh, if you're not laughing, gentlemen, you're learning. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. And uh, it's time, like, so me and my ex, we traveled the world together and, and we were doing shows. I, in, back in 2018, uh, I did 350 shows in 65 countries in one year, right? I know. Insane, right? But what that meant is that I was carry, I had carry-on luggage only, right? Now, and for that, what that meant is that I didn't really carry a lot of sanitary products with me, you know, because normally women, we do, we always have them in our thing, like, because we, you know, have to go out, and if, you, if you're lucky enough, you choose to have your period every month, you go out and you buy sanitary products. Maybe there's one time where a guy, your boyfriend, like, will be sent out that one time when, you, you know, you send him out to the supermarket and he has to buy the sanitary products and he's just there in, like, the sanitary aisle, like, looking like a doe-eyed Bambi, like... <laughs> The only difference is he knows he's gonna get shot if he brings home the wrong thing. Right? 
So I didn't have any tampons. And now, back in 2018, when we were doing these shows all around the world, uh, is that they were doing some shows in some countries that we probably shouldn't have been. So the day that I landed, we landed in Cairo, Egypt. Now. <laughs> Egyptians, welcome. Uh, <laughs> You're also probably thinking, why the fuck were you doing this kind of show in Egypt? <laughs> but I got out alive. Uh, and uh, the day that I landed, right, I got my period. And in my Australian brain, I was like, oh yeah, great. I'll just go into the pharmacy, ask for some tampons, happy dates, right? <laughs> Don't ruin the story, guys. Uh, so I go into the pharmacy right? and I'm dressed ready for the show, right? So I'm, I'm on my way to the show. I had this like tight pants suit on. I had my sparkly heels. I had all my makeup done, like all things like, right? And I walk into the pharmacy and behind the counter was this old Egyptian man, right? Like an old weathered looking Egyptian man. <laughs> kind of looked like he'd been there since the pyramids. Basically. <laughs> And I went up to him and I was like, hi, um, hi, hello, hi, um, uh, um, uh, uh, tampons, Tam -tam tampons? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so I don't know why in this moment, but I decided to act out tampons. <laughs> I was like, you know, like, like, uh... <laughs> Nothing, right? I thought it was like a bad game of charades, you know? And I was like, oh, he'll understand. He probably knows hieroglyphics, you know, it's fine. So after a moment, right, he gets up, he gets up, he looks at me, he gets up off his chair, he looks at me, he blinks and he goes, go. And we start walking into the pharmacy. Right? Now we're going like further and further and further into the pharmacy. And I looked back and the light from the windows was disappearing. <laughs> And we keep walking, we get to the very far end of the pharmacy. There's nowhere else to go, but there's a spiral staircase, right? And he looks at me and he goes, gum. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Bad things happen in basements. <laughs> So we go down the spiral staircase, right? We're in this whole other section of the pharmacy and we keep walking and I'm thinking, fuck, what would have happened if I asked for a pregnancy test? <laughs> Probably as a mummy. Anyway, that's a stupid joke. It's my favorite joke of the whole show and it's so stupid, anyway. So we keep walking, right? No, don't clap, don't clap it, it's fine. You didn't clap at the start, don't clap now, right? So we keep walking, we get to the very, there's like nowhere else to go. There's just like boxes and like a cupboard, right? There's a cupboard on the floor and he gets down on his knees and I'm like, he's not gonna get back up again. <laughs> and he gets down and he's like, Arr! and he pulls out something and he hands it to me and he goes, for you. <laughs> and I took this artifact and what he offered me, ladies and genitals, was not tampons. <laughs> what he offered me was what I can only describe as adult diapers. <laughs> Thank you so much, right? So I took this relic, uh, walked back through the Chamber of Secrets, paid, paid for my nappies, uh, walked past three big promotional packets of condoms and walked out of the store, right? Now, I had to go and do a show this night, right? So I was doing a show, I was wearing this tight pantsuit, right? And uh, I was on stage and the whole time on stage, I just did like back, like with my back to the wall, just like side to side. I didn't, because I didn't want to turn around because if I turned around, it looked like the Alibaba version <laughs> of Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, I was like, I don't need a BBL, I've got a diaper. <laughs> and you know, like when you walk with a thick ass pad on and it's just like, whoosh, 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 right? The silences were deafening that night, right? And also, like, I hadn't worn a pad since I was like 14, right? So, and that day I was wearing a G string. Now, for the women in the audience who have ever worn a pad with a G string, will know that when you wrap that thing around, 
it is not coming off again. <laughs> and then it's somehow like you put it in, it somehow wedges perfectly into your ass crack like a plaster of Paris, you know? And then you have to pull it out like a slice of cake, yeah? Mmm, lecker, yeah. And then you have to get, you have to get that pad off the fucking tamp, like the, spr the string, right? So you're there and you're like... And there's cotton everywhere like a fucking dandelion. You're like, oh, I just have to throw out this G-string right now. This is what happens. So after the show, there was an American in the show and I was so excited to see an American. So I went up to her and I was like, hey, sorry, excuse me. She's like, uh, why are you whispering? I was like, oh, I don't know. I just thought they were illegal. <laughs> She's like, no, no, they're not illegal. They're not haram. They just choose not to wear them because there's a lot of girls who might think that it'll affect their virginity or their hymen. And I was like, ah, that makes sense because I've had tampons bigger than dicks. Yeah. <laughs> just like to let that one simmer across the room. Um, so I said to her, I was like, hey, can I like buy some tampons from you? He was like, I can't find them here. She's like, yeah, sure. You know what? Um, meet me tomorrow. Uh, there is a McDonald's in the center of Cairo. Uh, just meet me like there's a McDonald's, like, but the, like the alley behind the McDonald's. Like we just meet in the alley. In the and I was like, is this a drug deal? <laughs> so I waddled to meet her the next day, just like whoosh, 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 whoosh standing on the street corner like a fucking addict. Like I was like, come on, give me the tampons. Come on, give me the tampons, right? She comes bounding down the street, like the street with this big Mary Poppins bag of sanitary products, right? And she just looks at me, she's like, okay, what do you want? I got light, I got super, I got regular, I got super, super, I got super, 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 super. I got the ones as big as the dicks. So I was like, give me the dicks, give me the dicks, right? Just reached in like, ha, ah, and waddled away like, whoosh, 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 right? I love telling this story on stage, I love it so much. Uh, partly also because I get all of like women coming up to me after the show who always want to give me advice. And I had this one girl, um, I won't mention her nationality, German, and... Uh... <laughs> and she came out to me, she's like, Elena, you know, it's so bad, you know, you should stop using tampons because it's bad for the environment. Elena, it's bad for the environment. You, be you should use a menstrual cup, Elena, because it's better for the environment. It's better for the environment. I was like, okay, Greta Thunberg. Uh... <laughs> I was like, I didn't know, like, I didn't know the menstrual cup. I didn't know that you had to sanitize that shot glass between uses, right? I didn't know that, right? So I'm like, I don't, I don't know. And so I don't want to be that person on my Ryanair flight tomorrow, just like sitting there, like dipping my menstrual cup in and out of hot water. <laughs> and old mate Klaus next to me being like, yeah, that's is das. Uh, das is shots, Klaus, yeah. Bloody Mary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know it's so gross, isn't it? It's so gross. I don't know. I won't use a menstrual cup. I don't. I, don't, I have trust issues. I won't use it. Right. And I can also understand. I can feel the hesitation and the anxiety in the room from the men in the audience because I know. Because every time I talk about me like menstrual or tampons, like I can just see them. They just start getting like all tense. They're like. As soon as I mentioned tampons, as soon as back when I said I was like, oh, you know, I went to Egypt and said tampons, I could just feel the tenseness in the room. They're like, oh no, she's talking about menstrual products. Oh no, tampons. Oh no. Like I can see you like mentally check out. Some of you go to the bar, right? You just feel this anxiety just like getting up there like, oh no, I don't want to hear about tampons, menstrual things. And I was like, yeah, you know what that feeling is, gentlemen? PMS, okay? <laughs> Calm down, right? I don't know, but I don't. I won't use a menstrual cup uh, because I have trust issues. Uh, so my friend one night was having sex with this guy, uh, and she had her menstrual cup in, and she forgot it that she had it in. Uh, some of you know where this is going. Uh, and she was lying on her back, right? And he was about to go in from the top, right? She forgot it had it in, and because of like the pressure and the suction, it just like shot out, like, and. It hit him on the chest, right? And it starts oozing down like some abstract painting, you know? Wow, it's such art. Uh... Another girl told me that when she was in the, the, the airplane because of the pressure changes in the cabin, her cu menstrual cup just like dropped out. Uh, I know, not funny. Uh, just, uh, I'm just scaring all of the women in the audience, right? Yeah. New fear unlocked. Um... 
And I had a doctor come to the show. This is the thing, these are the stories that I get. This doctor came to me uh, after the show. He worked in emergency and he said to me, he's like, yeah, I don't, you know, I, I don't recommend the menstrual cup either. Because uh, he said he had two sisters, two teenage sisters uh, present. They were both sisters and, uh, and they presented both with a bacterial infection because the sisters were sharing. Oh. Yeah, I'm not going to finish the sentence. <laughs> just, I don't know, like an iPhone, like, like charging, like just like chat, like between that, right? So this isn't funny, right? This isn't funny. Just consider this a PSA, okay? Uh, please do not share your menstrual cup uh, with anyone unless it's Klaus on a Ryanair flight. Uh, of course, Klaus. Um, good times. <laughs> Man, it's too much. So yeah, my boyfriend last year was French. Um, sorry, he still is, he's alive. Uh, <laughs> And we met and fell in love during lockdown, which I think was a, it was a weird time to date during lockdown. I know it's like, if, you know, it's now we're kind of a bit out of it. We're past the, we still got the PTSD, but we still don't want to talk about it. Uh, but for me and Max, we, we met during lockdown and, uh, and it was a weird time to date because I feel like dating in lockdown was like I, I, what I can equate it. I mean, I've never been in prison, but this is kind of what I imagine it would be like. You know, you just like go to prison, you fall, meet someone, fall in love, have this relationship. And then like 10 years later, you get out of prison and you're like, oh, what the fuck was that? Uh, <laughs> To me, that's what dating was like in COVID. Um, but my ex, like, so he, he messaged me, he messaged me, he slid into my DMs uh, on, on Instagram, because uh, it's just how all good millennial dating stories start, right? And he wrote to me, he's like, eh, Merci, Elena, eh, for your video, eh, because with your comedy video, you help me learn English. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you're using my comedy videos about anal to learn English. <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm Australian. I barely speak English properly, right? <laughs> but it was cute. So we start texting back and forth, right? He was in France. I was in Berlin. And, uh, and it got to the end of 2020 and uh, I couldn't, I was locked out of my country. I couldn't go back to Australia. So I was like, you know what? I'm really liking this guy. We've been like FaceTiming, things going really well. And I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a train in the middle of a pandemic, pre-vaccines, 16 hours from Berlin to Bordeaux to meet this guy. Cause that's how desperate I was. <laughs> And uh, so I did, I went down and took a train down and met him. I also didn't know how old he was either um, uh, because uh, like I asked him, uh, don't worry, I asked him uh, and he was like, oh no, it's, uh, you know, I will tell you when the time is right. And I was like, okay. <laughs> but he looked like, he looked like 28, right? Cause he was a rugby player. So he was like this big like rugby player. And I was like, okay, he looks like 28. Like, yeah, that's fine. I was like, okay, will you find the appropriate time to tell me how old you are, right? You tell me the perfect, most appropriate time that you can think of to tell me how old you are, right? So I go down there, we meet, it was great. We have a lot of sex, it's very good. He's very good at it. And I was like, well, he's very good at it. So he must be 28. Cause I thought age equaled experience, right? <laughs> And uh, we're having sex and he goes down on me and like he, he, like, he, he finishes and I'm lying there in this like post orgasmic bliss, right? And then he looks up between my legs and goes, I'm 21. <laughs> and that is the moment that I fell in love with that man. <laughs> write a joke with better comic timing than that right but then my first response was like i need to see your passport right now <laughs> as if the entrance to my vagina was like a club uh... <laughs> it's for the americans in the room uh... Uh, yeah and i was like and I, like I was one of those women i was like i was one of those women that was like mm -mm, i'm never gonna date a young guy i'm not gonna do it no they're too immature no i'm never gonna do it and now i'm like <laughs> <laughs> you should uh... Because young guys are great because they have this little thing called um energy that's it <laughs> and a hairline you know <laughs> like they're not going to turkey anytime soon um but he did he had so much energy in the bedroom he always wanted to try like every single position um probably because he just got a book for his 21st birthday i'm right? <laughs> um, crossing off the countries he's crossing off the sexual positions you know and he always wanted to try the position I hate the most. And that is the 69 position, right? I hate it. I hate the 69 position because it's always men that suggest it, right? Always men that suggest it because they get their dick sucked, eat a vagina at the same time. And I swear to God, it is the only time that men can multitask. Am I right? Am I right? There is 
too much. There is too much going on. It's like... I think the only people who enjoy this position are people with ADHD, right? <laughs> Boyfriend wants to try 69? Try Ritalin. Yeah. It's too much, right? And the thing is, like, men, like, men, you get a beautiful vagina to look at. Beautiful pussy. Beautiful vulva. Always beautiful. Never smells. Never bits of toilet paper. Always beautiful. <laughs> the men like that joke. Uh, what a weekend. Dick, balls, asshole. <laughs> the trifecta. <laughs> like our only saving grace is that little bit of skin between the balls and the asshole, you know? And you just like stare off into it like a vast ocean, hoping that everything is gonna be okay. <laughs> Whenever I'm in this position, which is never a lot, by the way, uh, I always think about that scene from The Lion King, you know, when Simba is talking to Mufasa. It's like, Father, what is that shadowy land over there? <laughs> you must never go there, Simba. That is beyond our borders, yes. So I did, I, I was, uh, during lockdown, I was with my 21-year-old uh, boyfriend and it was amazing. I also started learning French, uh, cause I hate myself. And, uh, and people always say, people always say that French is a very sexy language. You know, they're like, oh no, French is an amazing sexy language. Like, do we agree? We think French is a sexy language? Oh, <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they, like, no, oh, for, uh, yeah, from the back, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, like French for me, I used to think it was a sexy language until I learned French, right? <laughs> And, uh, and, and also my boyfriend, like, he couldn't understand how, why it was so difficult for me as an Australian to learn another language, right? He's like, no, my Elena, why is it so hard for you to, to learn uh, French, uh, another language? Uh, like, what do you learn in school in Australia? Yeah? <laughs> what do you learn in school? Because uh, in France, uh, we learn uh, philosophy, uh, we learn basic grammar. What do you learn in school in Australia? <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> um, in Australia, we don't learn philosophy or um, <laughs> basic grammar. <laughs> what we learn in Australia is how to survive. <laughs> yeah, you laugh, you laugh, Vienna. But I went to a regional primary school, right? And all I remember from that was like how to swim out of a rip, what to do if there's a shark attack, what to do if there's a poisonous brown snake that comes up and fucking bites you, yeah? I said to my boyfriend, I'm like, yeah, what are you gonna do, yeah? What are you gonna do if there's a poisonous brown snake that comes up and bites you? You're just gonna be there and be like, uh, no, le masculin, le féminin. Uh. Mais en français, there's a lot of exception in the French language. Uh. To be fair, that snake would be like, you know what, fuck it, I'm out, right? I don't know, but there is this thing there. They do say the French make everything sound sexy, which I do agree with. And when I first moved from um, from Germany to to France, uh, there was a guy I was talking to, a French guy, and he's like, "Oh, oui, Elena, you came from uh, Germany with the, the, the Hitler." <laughs> what? You know, Elena, the, the, the Hitler. Mm, who? You know, Elena, the, the, the Nazis. I was like, "Oh, Hitler! <laughs> How the fuck do you make Hitler sound good?" Right? <laughs> <laughs> the Hitler, ooh la la. <laughs> Like, French is the only language that can make Hitler sound like a successful painter, you know? <laughs> it's the only language. Hitler. Hitler. Sounds like he lives in Montmartre. I don't know. Uh, and that, like, but the other thing that French makes sound really good, uh, which I think, is uh, STDs. Now, <laughs> hear me out on this, right? Because, like, STDs, they've had a bit of a bad rap the last couple of years. Like, no one's worried about that virus, you know? Like, they're all worried about the other fucking virus. They're not all getting, you know, they're all getting swabbed up here instead of swabbed down there, right? <laughs> so I think we should just say, like, we should just say all the STDs in French, right? Because it sounds better. You say it in English. Like, like okay, take herpes, for example. You say, like, oh, I have herpes. People will be like, hey, <laughs> Say it in French. I have herpes. <laughs> high fashion. <laughs> Port Couture. It's expensive. That's what that is, right? That's my favorite joke I've ever written, uh, but it's a very niche high fashion joke, right? <laughs> so if you don't get it, the next time you go to like, you know, the rich street here in Vienna, like whatever, and you see that store like Hermes, but it's actually Hermes, uh, Hermes, Hermes, uh, same, same. 
It's a slow burn. Uh, just like our base. Uh, good time. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, we, uh, we, me and my mates, we broke up for a few reasons. One of the main reasons was that I uh, was keeping a secret from him our entire relationship, uh, and that is that I am gluten intolerant and he is French. <laughs> and I thought he would understand because like French people are intolerant of everything. Uh, <laughs> turns out not. And I found, out, I found out I was gluten intolerant about seven years ago uh, when I was still in Australia and I had to go to emergency because I had really bad cramping and I got to the hospital and the doctor put me on the table and he's pressing around. He's like, mm, yeah, okay. Uh, yes, uh, Miss Gabrielle, I need to tell you that you are pregnant. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> With a poo baby. <laughs> I was like, you, sir, are a bad doctor. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, how do I get rid of said fecal fetus, okay? And then he just pushes laxatives towards me. He goes, well, if you can't deliver it naturally, we're going to have to go in for a C-section. I was like, I am never coming back to this hospital ever again. I don't know. And then I had to have a colonoscopy at the age of 27. I don't know if anyone here has ever had to have a colonoscopy, but it was the most violated I've ever felt, and I've watched Emily in Paris. Uh, <laughs> So what we did eventually, we did eventually break up and he broke up with me in the most French way possible because he looked at me, he's like, no, me Elena, if I love you, I have something to lose. Yeah. If I love you, I have something to lose. I was like, what is this noble shit? <laughs> like, it's not 1942, you're not a fighting the Hitler, like what the fuck, right? <laughs> but it was very different to how my German boyfriend broke up with me. Because <laughs> I came home from work one day and he was standing at the door awkwardly is German and uh, he looked at me he's like uh, yeah uh, Elena please take a seat I was like are we gonna talk about the recycling again <laughs> it's like seven fucking bins I don't get it right and he looks at me, he's like, ah, yeah, you know, Elena, I've been thinking. Yeah, I've been thinking. And uh, I just, um, I think that uh, we uh, should break up um, because I just don't think that you make good girlfriend material. <laughs> oh, um, okay, Martin. Um, well, do you have um, a, a list? <laughs> yeah. He's <laughs> like, Danke schön, Martin. Um, <laughs> Amazing. But I, uh, in writing this show as well, I was thinking a lot about addictions uh, and I was thinking a lot because I think life is just kind of like a cycle of like addictions, uh, be it mini or large ones until you die. Uh, I know that's morbid, but welcome to my brain. Uh, <laughs> And I do, because I, I think about a lot of my friends, particularly in your 30s, like my, 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 my gay best friend. I love my gay best friend. I think everyone should have a gay best friend. Uh, is there any gay guys here tonight? <laughs> the bottoms are in tonight. Welcome. Uh, if you don't have a gay best friend, please welcome. Uh, you have one tonight. Uh, I love my gay best friend. I love him so much, uh, mainly because he taught me how to suck a dick. Uh, <laughs> He's really great, but he's addicted to cocaine. He, he loves it. Like he's, um, he, he just can't get enough, you know. And uh, and for that reason, we also nicknamed him the Hoover, um, <laughs> for two reasons. <laughs> and I'll let you figure out those two reasons. But I love him, right? And I'm worried. About, I was worried about him, and I'm, I'm, I'm still am. Like you know, it's it's hard to sort of kick addictions, um, particularly with like a drug that's so like woo party. And uh, but then I was thinking, like I was like, what am I addicted to? You know, because I'm not addicted, like I'm not addicted to cocaine or anything like that. Like I'm, I'm pretty boring. I don't really drink that much. Uh, I think I'm addicted to my job because uh, there is sayings that say that like the laughter and the applause that you get is like a huge hit, uh, kind of like the same as heroin. So like, whoa, <laughs> shoot me up, guys. Uh, but I, I think the biggest thing that I'm addicted to, and this is why I think, and I know I'm going to be a great mum, because I do think about that, but I know I'm going to be a great mum, because I'm addicted to Candy Crush, right? Because <laughs> it's me and 65-year-old women playing Candy Crush, right? Our addictions, like our addictions always come out of habitual things, like things that we start off doing as a habit and then eventually they turn into an addiction, right? And for me, I am a terrible flyer, right? I'm a terrible, I'm an anxious flyer. And the only thing that makes me feel good on a flight is playing Candy Crush because it calms my anxiety. 
Actually, that's a lie. I, there was another time where I did feel good on a flight, and that's when I had a female pilot, uh, and I saw her buy a salad before the flight, and I was like, she's got something to live for. <laughs> Also, I, I don't even know why I have to preface, like, female... I, I hate that, right? Because I, I don't know why we have to always preface gender, particularly with women. Like, you know, it's like female pilot, female doctor, female comedian. I get it all the time. Female. Female comedian. <laughs> female comedian, right? And it, cause this one time I was on, on this flight, right? And, uh, and I got on uh, in economy, and this guy got on in business class, because um, I'm still a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, he gets on in business class and the pilot comes over, just happens to be a woman, comes over and uh, she comes over the loudspeaker and she's like, ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board this. And Actually, sorry, that was a complete lie. It was more like this. Right. And the guy in, in business class, right, he gets his bags, he takes them down, he gets his bags, he's like, I'm not flying on this plane with a female pilot. And he grabs his bags and he storms off. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Like, what is wrong with this guy? Is he just like out there in the terminal being like, no, because it's called a cockpit, not a pussy pit. <laughs> oh, dude. But also, how good does a pussy pit sound? Uh, <laughs> Sounds like an adult water slide, yeah. Mm. Or a club in Berlin. Let's go. Um, I don't know, but I think I, I do think a lot about like what kind of mum I'll be because I think you think that when you when you don't have kids and you and you want kids, you're always like, oh my god, what kind of mum will I be? And I, and I think I'm gonna be a good mum. I think I'm gonna be a great mum because last year I was doing some shows in Dubai. Uh, again, why I was doing this kind of show. <laughs> Dubai is another story, but I got out alive. Uh, and I was there, I was doing some shows with uh, two Irish comics, um, sorry, two drunk Irish comics. And, uh, and at the end of every single night, they got completely wasted, like completely wasted. You know, you've met Irish people, you know, right? Like just absolutely like, like just legless, like just so drunk, right? So at the end of the night, I ended up becoming their mother, right? Like at the end of the night, I'm just there and I was like, no, Mickey, Mickey, no, 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 Mickey, no, you can't fuck that girl, Mickey, no, 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 because your dick's not gonna work, okay? No, no, Mickey, Mickey, here, no, KFC, 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 into bed, Mickey, oh, who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Who's a good, who's a good boy? I know you want to wank, but remember you're left-handed, not right, okay? Who's a good boy? I was like, I'm going to be a great mum. <laughs> I don't know. So, thank you. Just going to go back on. I do. I think, uh, I don't know, it, it's tough like in writing this show and thinking about it. And, and me and my ex, like the biggest reason why we broke up is because I want a child. Um, and he is a child. And... <laughs> And it sucks. It sucks so bad when you find someone that you fall in love with and you can like you just love so much unconditionally and you you both feel it but then the timing doesn't work out, right? Because I think like for women in the audience, whether you want kids or you don't want kids, you're always thinking about your biological clock. You just are, right? So there and people remind you, like my mum, she's always like, Alana, you know, you've only got 10% of your eggs left, Alana, just 10%, Alana, just 10%, just 10%. I'm like, shut up, mum, because every time you say that, an egg dies, okay? <laughs> My German friend came to the show recently and I love it because he literally sat there after the show. He's like, uh, no, but Elena, I don't think it's 10% because by the time you're born, you have 100%. And by the time you go to about 30, then you should have like at least 30 to 35% of your Excel. I'm like, this is not an Excel spreadsheet formula, okay? <laughs> And like, and, and after the breakup, it's hard when you go through a breakup when you love them so much and it's kind of a mutual thing, you know, it's just the timing. And, uh, and with my ex, like, I, I was distraught. Like, I was so, and it's, it's hard when you go through a breakup because, like, the last thing you want to do is hate your ex. But I always like to think of my exes as teachers, you know, like, they teach you something, whether they teach you about a movie that you like or, like, maybe a new band that you like. Uh, like, with my ex, he taught me how to love again and I taught him where the clit is. Um, <laughs> So it's just a pay it forward situation, right? And it was crazy. And then after the breakup, I went on this like downward, <laughs> downward spiral. Like I was like there, like I was on all of the dating apps. Like I was distraught. Like I was on Tinder, Bumble, Uber Eats, like all of them. <laughs> and you laugh at Uber Eats, but the Uber Eats guy will come to your door, right? <laughs> I've had Tinder dates that will not come to my door, right? 
apps. I was on all of the dating apps and I went down and I started getting addicted to dating apps and I was like, because I was paying for Tinder and Bumble simultaneously. I know. <laughs> That's when you know you have a problem, right? <laughs> and I was there and I was like, come on, like dick, 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 semen, 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 right? And I got so low. I hit rock bottom, right? Because it just became like this cycle of like fuck boy after fuck boy after boy fuck, right? It just <laughs> got crazy. And what I fast realized that during all of this is that I don't want a dick, I want a man, right? Now with any addiction, you have to hit rock bottom before you realize you have a problem, right? And because unfortunately there's no, like, there's no rehab for Tinder addictions, you know? There's no place in Miami where everyone's sitting in a circle just like, <laughs> it's been three days <laughs> since I got a dick pic. Like that place doesn't exist, right? <laughs> So I had to hit rock bottom and I hit rock bottom last summer. Uh, and, uh, and this was in, uh, I, so this guy I actually didn't meet on dating apps, right? I met this guy about four years ago after a show, but he had a girlfriend, but I locked that one away, you know? I was like, if he ever breaks up with his girlfriend, I'm a hundred percent there, right? So this past summer last year, I got a message from him and he's like, hey, Eleanor, me and my girlfriend just broke up. And I was like, already on Ryanair. <laughs> Because I will travel for dick, right? I will. Like, I think I'm off, I'm off all of the dating apps. I have been now for a year. <laughs> Ask me in a year how that's going. <laughs> uh, so I'm on a self-certified dick talks. Uh, but if I, if I ever get Tinder back again, I think I should just have in my bio, like, will travel, right? <laughs> So this guy, this guy lived in Cyprus. Now I love Cyprus. It's one of my favorite countries in all of the EU. I love it to bits, but it's a very divided history, right? Which I didn't know too much about. And this guy, this guy's name was Stavros, right? Stavros. I know, you know he's gonna have a good dick with a name called Stavros, right? Because no mother is naming their son Stavros without having a bit of a look beforehand, you know? I don't know if you know this, but Stavros means big dick in Greek. Um, <laughs> It doesn't. It means cross, but I'm like, mm, crucify me, daddy. <laughs> Love it. Stavros, right? Stavros, right? So I was like, you know what? So I did it. Like, I was going to fly. I flew to Cyprus. I took a 6 a.m. Ryanair flight for this guy, right? So I did it. I flew, and it was like super turbulent. I'm on Candy Crush the whole time. Just like, <laughs> just dick, 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 semen, 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 Stavros, right? So... I land and Stavros picks me up from the airport and he says to me, and he's like, okay, baby, I want to take you into the north side, right? And I didn't know that the north side is Turkey, right? And I didn't know this. I didn't know there was like a big war. I'm not going to go into it because I'm Australian, right? <laughs> and he says to me, he's like, okay, baby, I'm going to take you into the north side. And I was like, oh, cool. That'd be like a nice day. And he's like, okay, but baby, I need to warn you before we go. He said, we have to cross through a military checkpoint. And I was like, huh? <laughs> and he's like, also, baby, when we get into the north side, we're going to be targeted because we have EU number plates and we might get arrested. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, is Stavros a bad boy <laughs> in his Toyota Prius? Uh, for the climate. Uh, so we go through the military checkpoint, we go into the north side, and it was amazing. We, had, we went out, we had this beautiful Turkish lunch, and Turkish, me like, meza, this, like, beautiful lunch, and then we go and get the Turkish ice cream, you know, with the Turkish ice cream guy? You know, you know that guy? And it's just like, <laughs> like, give me the fucking ice cream, okay? I don't hate a lot of people, but I fucking hate that guy, right? It's like, on the list of professions, it goes, like, dentist, Turkish ice cream guy, right? <laughs> that people hate. So, so you finally get your ice cream, you're like, fuck you. Right? So I get my ice cream, I'm all happy. And uh, Stavros is like, okay, baby, let's uh, go back into the, the safety of the EU. And I was like, okay. So we start driving and we're about 20 minutes away from the checkpoint and Stavros puts his hand on my thigh and he goes, baby, I must, I must have you now. And I was like, <laughs> like right now, it's like three o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> He's like, no, 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 baby, the passion, the passion is too much. I was like, okay, calm down, Stavros. <laughs> so he pulls over the car on the side of a busy highway out the front of an apartment building. I could hear dogs barking and babies crying. And I was like, fuck, I wish I was back in Egypt buying tampons. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
And he's like, come on, baby, let's just jump into the back. Let's have a quickie, you know? And I was like, oh, fuck, I hate car sex. I hated it when I was a teen. I hate it now, right? Because you can never get fully naked. You've always still got, like, your pants around your ankles, like you're getting a gynecological exam, you know? <laughs> or, like, you have to, like, you know, you kind of, like, have to do that weird kind of flashy thing so you don't want to take off your bra completely, so you just have to be like, what, 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 <laughs> right? So we get into the back and I'm thinking like, fuck, like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna get like naked. I don't wanna have sex. Cause like, you know, I could go, like go to jail. Like I could see the news headlines the next day. Right. So I was like, you know what, Eleanor, you know what? Why don't you use your Hoover skills that your gay best friend taught you and finish him off. So he'll be happy and he'll drive you back into the safety of the EU. I don't know if anyone here has ever sucked a dick fearing for their life. No, just me. Okay, good. <laughs> I was so paranoid that I started sucking dick like a meerkat, right? I was like... <laughs> He's like, uh, baby, what's, uh, what is this technique? I'm like, shh. It's an Australian technique. For survival. <laughs> And I get to that point where he's just about to come, right? And I like, and I pull back and I look into his eyes. Now, before I finish this story, a little PSA, the last PSA for the show, guys. If you're ever engaging in sexual activity with someone, you should always be honest about things. Like, oh, hey, I might giggle when I come. Okay, cool. Or, hey, I have air pace. You know, just <laughs> balance it out, right? And I pull back and he starts coming and I fucking love this moment. I love this, I love this moment, right? Cause you feel like you've achieved something, right? <laughs> you know that, it's like the same feeling that you would get when you put an essay in on time at university, you know? <laughs> You're like, I did that, all right? <laughs> and if you're doing that, not a university, right? <laughs> so I pull back and I look into his eyes and he starts coming and his eyes start rolling back into his head and he starts having a seizure. So he's coming and convulsing. He's convulsing. <laughs> and you think Stavros was a little drippy comer, like drip, 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 drip. No, 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 no. Stavros was a motherfucking sprinkler, right? Just like Come everywhere, come over the roof, come over the windows, come over me. I was like, I feel like I'm inside a snow globe right now. But also part of me was like, oh, this is good strong semen. I should take this for later. This is good, right? And I don't know if anyone here has ever seen a man seizuring and coming at the same time, but it looks like a seahorse underwater, right? <laughs> and I just love that you're all imagining that right now, right? So I'm there, I'm like, I don't know, I'm like, I'm freaking out. I'm like, fuck, I don't know, how, I've never been in this situation before. I don't know how to deal with the poison, like the Stavros snake. I know how to deal with the poisonous brown snake, right? And he's there, he's like, <laughs> And then everything went into slow motion. And like my whole life like flashed before my eye. Cause the other one had come in it. And I'm there and I'm like, freaking do I'm like never been so I can't just get out of the car and be like um yes excuse me um yes um there's a car wash inside the car right but then part of me was like am I that good and then I'm looking at him and he's still there he's like fuck oh my god this is gonna die I'm gonna go to jail I'm like what the fuck is my mum gonna say you should stop boy fucking like I'm like what right and then I get out my phone I'm like fuck fuck my phone doesn't work because we're no longer in the safety of the EU and then I get there and he's there like so, I just got on Candy Crush. <laughs> he eventually comes to and he looks at me, he's like, sorry baby, sorry, sorry. It's just when the passion, the passion is too much. I have a seizure. <laughs> I was like, so I am that good. <laughs> But that was on me, right? I should have seen the red flags that day. I should have, um, but I was just confused because it was the Turkish flag everywhere. Um, <laughs> so we get back, we drive back into the safety of the EU and every time we had sex, every time he'd just be on the bed like, naked, just like fully having a seizure. And I didn't know what to do, right? I didn't know what to do in this situation. And he'd just go for a full like 10 minutes. And I didn't want him to like fall off the bed. Like I didn't want him to like roll off and hurt himself. So then I just made like this weird like pillow crib, you know? <laughs> go and like check my emails be like oh oh 
he's still going. Okay, yeah, this will do. I was like, I am gonna be a great mum. <laughs> Oh man. So yeah, I hit rock bottom. Um, I also need to address uh, that I, yes, I do have dicks on my ears, if you are wondering. Uh, I know some of you are probably there and you're thinking like, what the fuck is on her? That people are like, oh my God, are they J's? Are they candy canes? And I'm like, well, you can suck them. <laughs> um, but they are dicks. I, I, I think di I wear them on my ears. They are also are my merchandise, so you can buy them after the show. They come in pink, blue, gold, and black. Black is the most popular. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I know why. Uh, but, uh, and the thing is, like, we worship the, like, everyone worships the dick, right? Dick is also seen as a very good luck charm. Like, it's a, like, even in Bhutan, like, if you go to Bhutan, you will see just, like, big phallus murals everywhere. No vulvas, no vulvas, right? Just big dicks. Like, you go to your grandma's house, she'll have a big dick, like, just across her, like, like lounge room, right? And then she'll make you a cup of tea, and then she'll stir it with a dick. Um, not a real one, right? It's just not some guy in the kitchen just literally teabagging. Uh, just... Yeah. Gives a whole new meaning to nut milk. Uh, but gee, they are they are good luck charms. Um, but I think like uh, like I said, like everyone everyone does love uh, dick. You know, they are seen as a good luck charm. And for me, I, I love my job. I've been traveling all around the world for the last like better half of nearly six years, like telling date stories and hearing bad date stories. Uh, so I want to finish off the show with a little song that I wrote, a little rap that I wrote about. Uh, basically, there was one thing that like straight women and gay men got really angry about. So I decided to, I, I found a solution and I decided to write a rap about it. So uh, uh, let's, uh, can we hit the track please? Here we go. All right, you guys ready? I think so, yeah. This is in the style of Cardi B, because I am white, <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. My best friend set me up on this blind date When our eyes locked, I thought, oh my god It's my soulmate ticking all the boxes The perfect guy, good looks, career Oh, he can come inside When it got to the bedroom, I was naked first But he's still fully clothed and I started to fear the worst He's on top and I thought, oh no, not again I'm about to say those words, baby, is it in? Then like a horror film, it all made sense he turned off the lights and not just for suspense Dick so small, looking like three balls Dick so small, looking like three balls He's hammering away and breaking a sweat uh, If I were a virgin, my hymen wouldn't be broke yet Small willies are definitely a surprise But it's not like he got to choose his phallicized He's got that micro pee, -pee but that's okay Cause I'm more of an anal girl Anyway, next time you get one, don't worry at all Just be like me and put it in the other hole Yeah, dick so small, put it in the other hole Yeah, dick so small, put it in the other hole Dick so small, looking like three balls Dick so small, put it in the other hole Yeah What a t <laughs> If you see anyone who looks really upset, any guy that looks really upset after that, you'll know why. <laughs> um, anyway, you guys have been absolutely amazing. I'm Melanie Gabrielle. Good night.